shorty. This is not short. Um, Horn pipe? Mm -hmm. Horn straight down? Page 26. 26? Yeah. 26, straight down, straight down no repeat. Got it. No repeat.
seated for the senior processional.
class of 2023, please be seated. Good afternoon. I am Camille Seals, head of school, and on behalf of the faculty, staff, and the board of trustees, it is my honor to welcome you to the 2023 commencement of Columbus School for Girls. Welcome to our underclass women, to our class of 2023, big sisters here from the class of 2017, to our honored guests, and especially to the class of 2023. Today, we celebrate you and the spectacular achievements that have brought you to this point in your academic journey. I have greatly enjoyed getting to know you during my first year here as head of school. All of you have served as a shining example of what happens when young women find their voice and know their power. You have earned academic accolades from the National Merit Foundation and the College Board. You have earned athletic distinctions of honor from the Mid-State League. You have traveled over oceans and across countries, visiting ancient temples in Japan and historic theaters in London. And through it all, you have led with strength and grace, giving your time and talent to confidently lead the upper school and serve as mentors to your younger peers. I shared with you at your holiday dinner this past December that I have greatly enjoyed learning about and participating in the rich traditions that make up the fabric of CSG. Since then, I have watched as you performed for our community at the Thanksgiving program and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. I have marveled at your ability to plan and execute the Soul Food Fest and Senior Day. And on Senior Day, I walked the halls with joy as I saw the way that you all worked together to magically transform our school into a fun house inspired by the movie Despicable Me. The joy that you created for our students that day was palpable and truly an example of the work that we've all done this year to build on our sense of community here at CSG. You have all heard me talk about the African Bantu principle of Ubuntu, central to our community read last summer and loosely defined as, I am what I am because of who we all are. Ubuntu speaks to the interconnectedness of our shared humanity, and it served as an inspiration to me in selecting our theme for this academic year, community by design. Gathering together in community and fostering a sense of belonging is intrinsic to girls' schools and something that I believe sets CSG apart from other educational institutions. Whether you became a unicorn when you were three or 13, you have had the opportunity to grow together with peers in an institution that celebrates every day what it is to be a girl and a young woman. I know every one of you will take that sense of agency with you when you leave these halls to pursue your passions on college campuses and in internship programs and later in your careers. I know that each of you has the wherewithal to make your voice heard to, as we learned this school year from former New York State Representative Shirley Chisholm, bring a folding chair if you don't have a seat at the table. And it is my hope that you will use your voice to lift up and to advocate for others who might not possess the means to advocate for themselves. That, just as you have here, you will work to create community in your schools, in your workplaces, in your cities, and in your neighborhoods. I know that all of you have the ability to change the world for the better in ways that are big and small, and yet all equally vital. And I am excited to see where your paths will take you. Forte et gratum, class of 2023, and congratulations. As you prepare to enter this exciting new chapter, know that all of us here at CSG are cheering you on. Now please stand and join in singing our school song, Schoolmates Lift Your Voices.
You may be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of Student Council, Cece McClarty, who will share her remarks. Good afternoon, students, parents, faculty, staff, board of directors, and of course, the class of 2023. It's so surreal to stand before you today to give this speech. Thinking back to the beginning of senior year, in the thick of college applications, it seems as though this moment was out of reach. Yet, here we are today, taking a moment to celebrate the incredible accomplishments of my class, class of 2023. Before I get into my speech, I think it's only fair to share with you the advice that I was given to write this speech by my classmates. I repeatedly heard when looking for inspiration that I should, quote, better make you cry. <laughs> this was quite jarring as I was hoping that this would be a more uplifting event. Nevertheless, I don't want to let you all down. So at this time, please grab your tissues. Something you should know about me is that I'm really a numbers person. I remember them easily and I categorize my world through them. While this skill can really come in handy sometimes, my parents don't always think so, as I've really memorized all of our family credit card numbers. <laughs> that being said, as a part of the class of 2023, I can't help but see all of the numerous accomplishments our small class of 41 has achieved. 21 of us play an instrument. 20 of us spent our summers at a summer job or internship. Nine of us served on a student council position over the years. 12 of us are thespians. 32 of us are student athletes. And lastly, all 41 of us were accepted to college. <laughs> But numbers really only tell us so much. Our class is so much more. We're a fiery, fiercely ambitious group. We don't back down from a challenge, and we strive to improve ourselves and each other each day. We persist like no other and remain optimistic in our fight. Above all, the most inspiring thing about our class is that we've stuck together since the beginning. So let's start there, or well, I guess I should probably say over there. <laughs> PYC, the place where every day felt like a new adventure. From trips to Cynthia's Woods to weekly mystery reader guests, PYC proved to be a really cheerful time. I'll never forget the little things, like playing on the playground with Amira and Francis and painting self-portraits with Sophia, Anahita, Isabella, and Finley. But our PYC experience could not have been this magical without Mrs. Hiller. She was and still is a person we admire dearly. As she finishes her final year of teaching, we can only be grateful for the compassion that she has continuously shown us. Mrs. Hiller, along with the rest of the PYC teachers, prepared us not only for lower school, but for the rest of our lives. The class of 2023 jumped into lower school with an energetic start new friends to meet, and a whole new world to explore. I'll never forget our iconic chapels. From insects to Australia to the history of CSG, we definitely presented a wide range of topics. We were obsessed with mustaches in Mrs. Glimpse's class. <laughs> we read with Miss Rufel, and we loved to garden with Miss Kessler. We also met our big sisses, and our only hope was that we would be like them someday. Then, middle school hit. <laughs> With our teal tote bags in hand, we were craving independence. Middle school was the time that we really became close as a class. We may have initially bonded over all having braces and glasses at the very same time, 
and our weird inside jokes, like Betty. <laughs> but these seemingly childish antics laid the foundation for our lasting sisterhood. The strength of our class was truly put to the ultimate test as we entered upper school. The time when grades actually mattered, friend, friend groups changed, and we began to find who we truly are and explore our passions. I know we're all sick and tired of talking about it, but we also survived a global pandemic. COVID hit the spring of our freshman year, right as we were just beginning to understand what upper school was. From Zoom calls at home to masks in person, every step of the way, although we weren't always together, I knew I had my class to lean on. As restrictions eased up and things got back to normal, we began exploring our world. In our case, we traveled to Cleveland. <laughs> or the Paris of the Midwest. <laughs> in Cleveland, we saw Shakespeare's The Tempest, and we really watched literature come alive. And by the time we got back to CSG, we began to grow into our roles as upperclassmen. Finally, senior year, we brought the spirit and excitement back on campus with pep rallies, red gold competitions, and cheering each other on in our many successes. As much fun as it was, we also faced some of our most challenging moments, from spending countless hours studying, taking naps in the senior commons just to catch up on sleep, and shedding a lot of tears. The only way we made it was from the endless and unconditional support of our families and teachers. I don't think any of us would be standing here as the women we are today without them. There were so many nights that I spent locked up in my room feeling suffocated by all of my schoolwork. My family, although I didn't appreciate it at the time, showed up for me. They respected my space, let me do what I needed to do to feel prepared, and cheered me on along the way. I think I can speak for most of us when I say that our teachers were simply an extension of our families. They led with compassion and a desire to help. Besides answering clarifying questions, our teachers showed up for us outside of school. Dr. Nelson, Dr. Sweeney, Dr. K, Mr. Hartshorn, and Mrs. Miller all attended the various research presentations we all had over the summer. Dr. Tremper, Dr. Hathaway, and Mr. Parsons always came bursting with energy to cheer us on at every sports game and theater production. Not only did our families and teachers influence our CSG experience, but so did everyone else. Even on our most challenging days, we were always met with the smiling faces in the hallways light-hearted conversations with the lunch staff, and hugs from our youngest students. Above all, this year, I think our class confided in our upper school receptionist, Miss Nelson, the most. <laughs> she not only writes us slips to leave early, but she also gives amazing advice and candy in her office. <laughs> Miss Nelson quickly became a pivotal part of finding joy in our lowest moments of senior year. A special thank you to Miss Nelson. All of these people have supported us and challenged us to reach our full potential. But I feel as though that we've supported each other the most. I really can't go through with this speech without highlighting just a few of the things that make the class of 2023 special. For instance, Emma has truly redefined what sustainability means at CSG through her composting and education efforts. Becca has repeatedly welcomed us into our home, into her home to teach us Jewish traditions. The mock trial and robotics teams would not be the same without the leaderships of Sierra, Peyton, and Lena. The class of 2023 also has some amazing athletes that excel in their respective sports. Olivia and Gabby could lap us all in a swimming race. <laughs> Love will probably be in the Olympics for gymnastics. And Lainey gives everything during every tennis match, especially after she had her daily Celsius. <laughs> Maya's teamwork, effort, and skill she applies to tennis, basketball, and track is unmatched. And Claudia and Annie's leadership led the soccer team to win again and again. Without JC, Kayla, Amelia, and Lizzie by my side during practices and games, field hockey would not have been the same. This same praise is due to the artists in my class. Maddie, Jaden, Danielle, and Tyree have truly made names for themselves in the theater program earning a laugh and standing ovation every time they take the stage, while Violet, Layla, Carmen, and Eva make sure everything is running smoothly backstage. K-12 
Tammy was not only the lead in The Sound of Music, but she has the confidence to try anything. Whether she's Eunice the Unicorn at Scholarship Walk, <laughs> or making a Regency era dress. Anya and Katie meticulously taught the whole upper school how to crochet. And Ella constantly rocks her pit vipers <laughs> while spending hours at crew practice. Charlotte and Juno aren't incredibly talented visual artists, while both Ryan Zink and Ryan Wallace excel in photography. And Lucy and Macy lead in the band ensemble. I cannot express enough how proud I am of all of you and how much we have all grown together in these 16 years I've been here. I really feel as though, for many of us, CSG has become our second home. And now, having to leave our home behind feels like an enormous task. This school has prepared us for everything in the future, to follow any passion we choose and to achieve any goal that we set. We may have to leave the halls of CSG, but CSG is so much more than 65 South Drexel. It's a connection of women from all around the world with our bond as a class. At the heart of it, the power and passion of the CSG community really lies within us. We're what make up CSG. I want to truly thank the class of 2023 for making me the person that I am today. <laughs> I'm grateful that you were the people that I spent my CSG years with, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cece, for those beautiful remarks celebrating your class. As we continue our program, the president of the class of 2023, Peyton Raidler, will lead us in reciting our school prayer. Watch over our school, O oh Lord, as its years increase and bless and guide its children wherever they may be. Let their hearts be warm with the flame of their youth's ideals, their faith unshaken, and their principles immovable. Be thou by their side when the dark hour shall come upon them. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort and help them when they are weak-hearted. Raise them up if they fall, and grant that all may grow in grace, and departing from ungodliness, may serve thee in pureness of living and truth. Amen. I am thrilled and honored to introduce our 2023 commencement speaker, CSG alumna from the class of 1998, Anastasia Staten. Anastasia joined CSG in the seventh grade, and during her time here, leaned into opportunities that pushed her outside of her comfort zone. It was a practice that would serve her well as she pursued a career working in politics and later nonprofit management. Staten now serves as the executive director of the ESA Foundation, the philanthropic arm of the video game industry, which provides educational experiences in game making arts and technology for underserved college age students. In addition to leading the foundation, she also serves as a board member and chair of the Board of Trustees at the Halo Trust and Halo USA, respectively, a $100 million non-governmental organization which helps countries recover after conflict. Please help me welcome back to CSG, Anastasia Staten. Wonderful to... Uh be here with all of you today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, particularly after following CC, I'm not sure what you can learn from me. Um, certainly not the art of public speaking. Um, that was amazing. Congratulations. 25 years ago, I graduated. Uh, first life lesson, time flies. It does not feel like 25 years. What an exciting day to be here with all of you, especially you, the class of 2023. 
Wow. Amazing, right? Sitting there in those chairs, did you ever think your journey would look the way that it did getting here to this moment? You were one of the classes that came up during COVID. The world has changed so much during your upper school years. And the, frag the fragile balance of the world and our democracy has been discussed and challenged daily. COVID changed the world forever, but you navigated and here you are. Here today, before your family and your friends gathering in support of you, you have so much to look forward to. You have thrived. And if you, like me, you did it in part because of the opportunities you were given and the community that you had at CSG. Interestingly enough, uh, when preparing to speak with you, I was in discussion with some of the faculty about some of the themes and we stumbled across uh, me mentioning uh, the pioneering Congresswoman and presidential candidate Shirley Chisholm, who famously said, uh, as Ms. Seals uh, shared, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And for me, I think that when I think about what that folding chair means, it's equally a metaphor for opening doors for yourself, but it's also a toolkit of all of your experiences, all the value you can bring to the table in any situation. Just like when Congresswoman, the Congresswoman was blazing her trail, and despite individuals like her raising their voices, breaking glass ceilings, the world sadly remains a very inequitable place. All of you will still unfortunately find yourselves in situations where you have to bring a folding chair to the table. But you are prepared, and in part because of the education you received at CSG. Well, there you are, sitting in your folding chairs, and I'm guessing, glad for it, how many of you are wearing new shoes? How many are you wearing high heels that are way higher than you normally wear and grateful for your chair? Yeah. Before coming to CSG, I was attending public school and I had a great experience, but I wasn't particularly challenged. School wasn't always a safe place. Um, and it wasn't really an environment where I could fully realize my potential. My fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Stevens, you have to picture her. Rail thin, rail, rail thin. Hair like a football helmet, as if it was made out of red hot Cheetos. Not joking you. Um, chain smoker, those super long cigarettes back, you know, back then when it was okay. <laughs> she only ate peanut butter and cheddar cookies. I mean crackers. She had coffin uh, manicured, nail manicures, way before they were like in vogue. And she was probably a fright to most nine-year-olds. But she was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. She adopted Philip Miller and I into her world, which meant we got to eat lunch in the classroom during recess, but we also had to wash her chalkboard. So I'm not sure who, where the real benefit came in, but her husband, Mr. Stevens, was also an educator, and he was retired, and he would always come into the classroom to help us. He must have seen something in me, because as I approached middle school, he suggested that I apply for miss missions at CSG. As there is now, there was a scholarship program, and he reassured my parents that that might be a way I could attend. Speaking of my parents, my mom is here today, I won't cry. <laughs> my mom is here today, and my dad is in home in Spain with my family helping out with projects, uh, watching online. <laughs> so before I go any further, I want to thank my parents for all the sacrifices they made to provide me with this access, ladies, access to an amazing education. I'd also like to thank the scholarship donors because they put me here today. It wasn't an easy road, but thank God my parents agreed with Mr. Stevens because I took the entrance exam, spoiler alert, 
I got in. <laughs> and maybe you know where this is going. But a seat was made at the table for me here at CSG. To be honest, and maybe some of you have felt this way, I was terrified when I started here. I'm even terrified to speak to you now. I was in seventh grade, and everything I knew, my world, my school, my friends, my body was changing. It was the first year I was wearing glasses. Let's not discuss the haircut I gave myself right before the start of school. And now I was getting a major upgrade in my education. It wasn't until much, much later um, that I learned the term imposter syndrome, where you don't feel like you've earned or you deserve to sit at a certain table. But that was exactly how I felt when I started here. But as I said, my parents and Mr. and Mrs. Stevens, they provided me with that chair. So I took my seat at the table, I discovered I wasn't an imposter. I had encouraging teachers and classmates who would become lifelong friends and innumerable opportunities I could have never imagined. I played on the lacrosse and field hockey teams. I loved Latin, uh, completely useless in my life, but <laughs> wonderful memory nonetheless. Please do not let that get back to Mrs. White. She tried very hard. I remember taking a history class where we studied the founding documents of our country, which included the Declaration of Independence, which mentions our unalienable rights. Not inalienable, I got it, I remembered, which states no matter our backgrounds or beliefs or genders, we have basic rights as human beings to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Why do I mention these things? because at CSG from the very start provided me with opportunities that everyone should have access to. The ability to explore, to experiment with different subjects, sports, relationships, have professional experiences to find themselves. CSG again and again moved me in that direction, helped me think about what my life might want to look like. I use the word might for a reason. 25 years ago, in the big scheme of things, is not long ago, trust me, and I'm still on my journey. And in my job as the Executive Director of the Entertainment Software Association Foundation, I work with underrepresented and underserved students, those around your age and not much older. So I know the pressures you all have faced this year, including enrolling in the right school, taking the right classes, taking the right internships, and trying to find the right path to your success. I felt the same way sitting there in one of those folding chairs. And by the way, back then, I had it all figured out, or so I thought. I can guarantee you that was a hot mess of a notion. I did not have anything figured out. Really, at the end of the day, I couldn't answer questions like, what do you want to be when you want to grow up? What are you going to major in? Where are you going to school? I just never felt like I had the answer. I may have answered the question, but in my heart, I didn't have the answer. Not long after I graduated from CSG, I learned that asking those questions wasn't getting me the answer. Rather, what did help was the openness and the courage to take advantage and make opportunities. Learning what I didn't want to do Developing a set of principles to help guide my big life decisions. These non-negotiables. Think of them as a personal guidebook, just like the principles of inalienable rights of our country. These are things that cannot be taken away or given away. They are your core. I learned I did not have it all figured out. I did not have the answer to those questions, but I did know how I wanted to live my life. The structure of a formal education, despite the amazing education at CSG, was not something that I enjoyed. So it wasn't shocking for me, after starting college, I discovered that it wasn't for me. I left. It was a scary decision. I mean, 
people will judge me. My parents sacrificed all of this to send me to CSG, and I might not finish. But from a professional perspective, my non-negotiable was I wanted to be in an environment where I was giving back to the world in a very specific way. And going to college and working on political campaigns was not getting me that. I don't want to sugarcoat any of this in a couple of short sentences. These were scary, scary, scary steps, and I was extremely frightened. But part of the reason I was able to walk away from that situation and from certain situations and jobs in the future were because of my foundation at CSG. And each time I did that, I walked away with two important conclusions. Every experience, including failure, teaches you something. And nothing is permanent. Please remember, nothing is permanent. You can always move on to something that better suits you. So without knowing it, especially early on, I was working from a position of power, of personal power. Knowing exactly what I didn't want, I was able to take my folding chair to a new table, one that spoke to me more. And sometimes I had to throw a few elbows, but the chair got in there. So I jumped into that career, and I started to see clearly what kind of work I wanted to devote my life to. Fighting for a more equitable world through access and opportunity. That led me to two places. ESA Foundation, pays the bills, and the Halo Trust, of which I am the chair of the board. Some of you in the room that are a little bit older may associate the organization with a very famous photo of Princess Diana walking through a minefield. Halo is life-changing. Why? Because by its very nature, it does two things. First, it goes into countries all over the world that have been torn apart by war and civil strife. It removes landmines and other debris of war around the world, employing over 12,000 people from within their local communities. HALO also empowers training to remove not just the mines, but also teaches transferable skills. So when we meet our goal of removing dangerous materials so those people who have been forced to flee can return to their homes, farm, start businesses, they can thrive once again. And those who helped restore those communities have more opportunities than they had before. Now, I play just a small role in what has been Halo's role, which has been Halo's mission for more than 30 years. But I got to that table with my folding chair in hand, established by my non-negotiables. Look, don't get me wrong. There are people out there that know what they want to be from an early age. I'm just not exactly one of those people. But I know for me and many others, success did not come from their title. It did not come from the specific description of what they do all day long in a chair, but rather from the essence of how they've lived their life. My point here is, even when you have an idea of what you want to do, you still have to work out those non-negotiables in case you veer off the path you think that is meant for you or at any age you want to make a big major left turn in your life. Whatever situation, you have to be prepared to bring your folding chair to a new table. And as you do, more and more the imposter syndrome I talked about, it never goes away, by the way, but you learn to shut it up. You learn to say, okay, I heard you. Go away. I mean, today, I may be having a little bit of a moment. I mean, I might have moments when I'm in a room full of foreign ministers. I'm having dinner with Prince Harry on one side, the Prince of Jordan on the other, and I'm thinking to myself, and what exactly are my credentials to be in this room discussing restoring communities after conflict? Hmm. Huh. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, all right, I'm standing in the middle of a war zone in Iraq. Again, what are my qualifications? Uh, I'm standing in a room of 600 
C-suite executives of the video game industry. Why are they listening to me? And each time, I have to say, you have to say to yourself, please shut up. Please. Even when your false eyelash is starting to peel off and you have to politely remove it, flick it under the table, and it gets stuck to Prince Harry's leg. Sorry. But what gave me the credentials? I did the work. You did the work. I deserve to be in that room. You deserve to be in any room you want to be in. If there is a place at the table for you, great. But if not, CSG girls bring their chair to the table. A few thought thoughts in closing, now that I've less, less helped you rest your feet for a few extra minutes. There's a few things I wish I would have known in this moment, or things that took me, I'm not joking you, sometimes decades. Some of these are new revelations to realize. Don't write a five-year plan or anything that looks like it. I don't care what a magazine tells you, what not. I wish someone would have told me, don't. When I look back 25 years ago, the one thing I remember, aside from having it all figured out, remember, is how scared I was. I was scared of not doing everything just right. But as you've heard the saying, best laid plans, all kinds of wonderful and not so wonderful things are gonna happen to you, things you never expected, and you're gonna have to adjust. So be prepared to burn your five-year plan as soon as you write it, I promise. Did COVID not teach us that? Take all of that energy that you would have put into that five-year plan and take it on your next adventure in college. Develop your non-negotiables. For me, it helped me stay the course, and I learned a whole lot more about surviving and thriving. Life is more than work. I repeat this to myself daily. Life is more than work. When you're designing your non-negotiables, there is no magic formula. They should reflect you, your life, your lifestyle, your boundaries, your values. So much of this next part of your life is gonna be thinking about your career, and that's perfectly fine. But also consider other aspects that make a life, like relationships, friends, family, and giving back. Be open to love. Love that nurtures you. Love from your community, family, even romantic. It's easy to be occupied with this or that or rushing through, trying to be perfect, doing it all. All miss and noise, all miss and noise. For me, I could have missed out on the best part of my life. The life I'm building every day with my partner, Juan. Two crazy kids who every day in small ways and big ways, feed me. My life would be much less fulfilling without them. So if you do write a five-year plan, I'd say don't put love in it. You can't plan for it. You simply have to be open to it. And this brings me to the last thing. Enjoy the moment. It is too easy to get wrapped up and planning for everything. Going out with your friends tonight, packing up for college, for career, the next trip you're gonna take, but what about now? What about being in this moment right now? Savor this moment. This is your last experience here at CSG, like this, like a student, with your family members, these teachers, the administrators, your friends. If you're always looking forward, you're not seeing what's right in front of you. And what's in front of you is what really matters. You will most likely remember this moment for the rest of your lives. And if you speak to any alumni, that is a fact. This is truly a genuine, graceful, joyful moment that you earned. You will take it with you wherever you go. Tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, decades from now. 
It's been such a great honor to be with you here today. 25 years ago, I could have never imagined being given this opportunity. And I'll be honest, as you know, I probably said, what, why me? Why am I getting this invitation? I said, shut up. And I said, yes. And I'm so glad that I did. You all have so much to be proud of. Aside from yourselves, you've made so many people happy. You have finished an extremely significant chapter of your life, one that will serve as a foundation for the life you've created going forward. So now go, figure out what you don't want, jump at opportunities, and if there is no seat at the table, CSG girls bring a chair. Congratulations, class of 2023. So many incredible nuggets uh, in there. Thank you, Anastasia, for reminding us that knowing your power is being courageous enough to choose your own path um, and doing good in the world. It is now time to confer our diplomas. graduation program, please refrain from applauding or cheering until all of the diplomas are awarded. Finley Marie Moffitt. Ryan Joan Zink. Elizabeth Grace Bruning. Lena Sophia Jeffers, summa cum laude. Emma Jalen Kim. Amelia Schindler. Michaela Grace Kirby. Melanie Susan Klatt. Cum laude. Lucy Tan Yang. Jaden Marie Claret.
Rebecca Ellie Hoffman. Layla Dawn Nettis. <laughs> Love Michael Akpan. Catherine Miranda O'Leary, cum laude. Cynthia Charlotte McClarty, cum laude. Ryan Nicole Wallace. Amira Zoe Fullen. Carmen Lee Albrecht. Eva Maria Mercosii. Francis Josephine Lefkowitz Pizzuti. Jacelyn Alyssa Cassandra. Anahita Mariam Riazi. Macy Lane Schmelzer. Sophia Marilyn Rose Alicia Baker. Ella Laurie Alexander Petticord. Cameron Bess Kleinman. Violet Demko Garcha, magna cum laude. Juno Aileen Rose Thompson. Anya Maria Wynn Cum Laude. Sierra Lene Latham. Tyree Lanise Walton.
Peyton, Marissa, Raidler, cum laude. Claudia May Jones. Olivia Ellen Morse. Anne Patricia Wagenbrenner. Madeline Grace Keglovich. Isabella Cardona Luckage, cum laude. Gabrielle Yen, cum laude. Maya Nicole Howard. Aaliyah Danielle Knight. Charlotte Faith Epley. Now, please join me in congratulating the class of 2023. It is my pleasure to introduce a new tradition to CSG commencement, the alumni charge. Each year, a CSG alumna will deliver this message to the graduating class, reminding them of the prestigious community they are now a part of and charging them to live their lives with strength and grace. For this inaugural year, CSG trustee and 1970 alumna, Jeff and Jeffrey Wright will deliver the charge.
Good afternoon, ladies. Class of 2023, you've never looked better. <laughs> now I'm looking out there. If you are a CSG alum from PYC to 12th grade, any year, any decade, please stand and join me standing as I deliver the alumni charge on all of our behalf. Let's clap for these alums. On behalf of all of us standing to the class of 2023, CSG has cultivated each of you into the learner and leader you are today. It is now both your responsibility and your privilege to experience the lifelong sisterhood of CSG that it offers and we know. You are prepared to handle all of life's triumphs and challenges with strength and grace. May these guiding principles serve you throughout your lifetime. I urge you to think back on your time at CSG often and with fondness. CSG is strong today because alumni have invested their time, talent, and treasure. So give back as often as you're able in a way that's meaningful to you. Today, class of 2023, it is my pleasure on behalf of all of the alums of Columbus School for Girls to welcome you into our alumni community. And I offer you this charge. As you leave this campus today as a graduate and every day thereafter, harness the magic, the beauty, and the power of the unicorn to make the world a better place. Here's to you. Thank you, Anne. Music has always been a mainstay of our traditions here at CSG, and this is especially true of our commencement ceremony. I now invite you to listen to I Leave You With a Song, performed by the Grace Notes.
Thank you, Grace Notes. Since the founding of the school in 1898, CSG has developed and cherished traditions that unite many generations of women educated here. Throughout the commencement ceremony today, you have experienced many of these traditions. As we close out our ceremony this afternoon, you will notice that, the that as the class of 2023 processes out, their little sister class, class of 2029, lines the aisle holding the laurel chain. Sister classes at CSG share the same class flag, song, mascot, and other sacred symbols. The laurel chain is another symbol of the bond between these classes. It has been an honor to be with you as we celebrate the achievements of the class of 2023. I wish you all a healthy and joyful summer. Guests, please wait until after the postlude to exit and then join us in the spirit courtyard for light refreshments. Flag bearers, you may come forward. <laughs> 